Hello everyone, my name is Avery, and today in this episode I'm recovering the animation system for our player. As you can see, we've got it working right here. So by the end of the episode, this is what we're going to get. It's been a little while since the last episode, I wanted to apologize for that. I just got a little bit busy, but hopefully in the next week there will be a few more episodes coming out. So let's get started and jump right into the code. So now we're back into our game.go file, and everything that we're doing as up till now is still going to be just in this file. When we actually draw our character, we have that drawn down here. Um, there's a draw scene function, so he's going to be in that draw scene. So we have the player sprite, and so we're drawing the sprite, and then we're drawing the source and the destination. So let's just quickly go ahead and actually open up our player so we can go and look at them. It's this one right here. Basic character sprites. So I have this pulled up and as you can see here's the walking animation. This is where he's walking down, walking up, left and right. And there's four frames per animation. So there's four different animations that could happen in four different frames. And also it's 192 by 192. So if we were to look at that, if we were to configure grid then we can just do um, 48 by 48 and here I'll show the grid as well show grid as you can see each one of these animations or frames is within a 48 by 48 grid usually when I do it I want to I want to have too much space in between everything but because this is the art that we're using and I don't want to make it too complicated for everyone to have to manipulate artwork or anything like that um, we're not going to be covering anything like that, so it's just we're just going to do the 48 by 48. So now that we know that, what we have to do is change the player source in order to change what part of the frame needs to be drawn. So we can quickly just look at the player source and see where we have that. So the player source is a rectangle, and it's right here. So we can look at a little bit an example of what we're doing. Uh, I believe I have a Thing right here. No, I guess it's at the very end. That was the beginning. Here's an example using Raylib's code for some animation stuff. Let's pull this out. And here's an animation example. It shows the frame speed and it's showing the frames. But basically, you're using the same thing that we were just looking at and changing the size of the source for what it needs to pull from the image. And then it uses a frame count. And if, with that frame count, it changes every single time. Once we get further into it, I think you'll understand it a lot more. So there's going to be a few variables. So we're going to add, let's add a player moving. That'll be a boolean. And we can do player direction. And that'll be an integer. But we're also going to do player up, player right. Yeah. Let's do it in order. It makes sense. Down, player right and player left. And these can be integers as well. No, these can be booleans. So these player up and down, left and right, is going to be the same thing as the direction, except for the direction is also going to be used for saying which layer in the frame it needs to be. It needs to be 1 through 4, or 0 through 3, actually. But we want to make it so the player can walk in two different directions at once. You can walk down and left at the same time. Um, so we're going to be keeping track of that with just four different booleans. And we can also keep track of a actual frame count for the game. So let's do frame count int. And that's not going to be for the player. So we can do a player frame as well. And that'll be an integer also. And in our update, actually, yeah, so the very bottom of our update, we'll just do player moving equals false player up so if there's an easier way to do this let me know in the comments but player right player left equals false 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 I tried to setting them all to equal but uh, they gave an error so I think this is the way you're supposed to do it and go from what I can tell in our input section we're going to change a little bit we're not actually going to move the player within the input because that's something that should be done in the update so we'll just do if player moving 
and we can do right here. So if player up, let me copy that, and let's just copy that and paste it three more times. So this one's down, left, right. Of course, these ones are horizontal, they're on the X, left, so that one's gonna be plus, and that one will be plus. So these right here are gonna be changed as well. So what we're gonna do is player moving equals true. And we're also gonna do player direction equals, um, so when we looked at the file direction, so if the first row is zero, that means it's going down. So then going up is number one, and then left is three, or left is two, my bad, and right is three. So I have to double check that again. But uh, so going down is zero, player direction for going, oh no, I read that down, but this is W, so it's going up, this one's zero, and then this one is left, I believe I said left was going, yeah, number two, okay, and right here, that'll be three, let's go ahead and delete these as well, so we got the actual direction, but we're also going to set the um, uh, the up, down, and whatnot. So we'll do player up equals true. And just copy these like that. So this one is right. This one's left. And this one is down. So I know it's kind of repetitive since we're doing the direction and the down, but that's just the way they're doing it because we're gonna cover a little bit down here. So right here, obviously, this is moving what direction? Of course, you can say, oh, if it equals one, then move this direction, if it equals two. But if you do that, then you can't figure out um, what direction it needs to move in. Of course, there's other ways to do it. I mean, you can set some sort of binary flag or something, and you can combine things, but we're just gonna be doing it this way. So now that you've got that working, if the player is moving, then we could do also frame We'll do player frame plus plus. Then right here we can do the actual frame count. We'll do frame count plus plus. And right here we'll keep track of the frames. We don't want it to go over the fourth frame. So if it does, we reset it. So if player frame is greater than three, then player frame equals zero. So that's just reset again. If it's greater than three, then it's reset. Um, we actually don't want to have this in here because we don't want it every single frame. So, or actually no. So we want to have an if statement. So if, and then we'll have this in here. So let's just do if the frame count modulus eight equals one, then it'll move this frame. So we're just gonna try to say every single frame count, um, every eighth one is when our player's frame needs to change. And with Raylib, everything's just set up so there's 60 frames a second. And now it's actually update the player. So the player's uh, source. So do player source.x. And that one, player source.x, as we know, it's this way. So we're just going to say it's the width times the frame. Because if we're on the, zero, if we're on the first frame, other word zero. It's going to be 0 times 48, which is still going to be 0. And then it's going to do that for all the other ones. So we can do player source dot width times, and then I believe it's going to be player frame. And let's copy this for the Y. So the Y is that way. And then we can do height, even though it's a square. They're both the same size. And this one will do player direction, because that's the one that keeps track of which row should actually be in. So I believe this right here is going to need to be float 32 and this one should as well. So now we've got all this put in, let's go ahead and I guess compile it, um, see if there's any errors that we need to quickly fix through. Looks like it built, so now I guess I need to do that. Go main, and let's try running it. Okay. So it's not completely working. 
As you can see, it points in the direction we want to look at and also walks up. Apparently that one's working. So let's go ahead and quickly check what else needs to be fixed. Okay, looking in the code, player moving. It's only set for that one. Um, I don't think that, that was it completely because that one's for that one's for up. Okay, yeah, then that should be it. Let's uh, copy those and all these, and let's just go run. Try that one more time. And it looks like we have it. Yeah, we do. So we have the animation for the character. If he stops walking, he stops at the same frame that he's on. So what we can do for that is let's just um, at the beginning, just right here, we'll do player source dot x equals zero, and then okay, then this one should be if he's moving. Yeah, okay. So let's pop this one in here. And then this one should be right here. Because if he stops moving, we want to set it back to zero, and we're not going to change that. So let's run that one more time. And this should be everything. Perfect. So hopefully this is good. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I want to... I didn't plan on doing this, but... Oh, I have to close that. Gedit game.go. Another feature that we can try adding. Maybe we can try zooming in. Okay, so there's no zoom. With the camera that we added last time, there's an actual way to zoom. So let's just look at our camera. Okay, I believe this one right here might be my zoom. So let's change that to 0.5. Okay, after double checking, this right here is the rotation, and this one right here is the zoom. I'll just close that. Um, of course, yeah, you can do cam.zoom and change it. But you can also just, when we declare it, we can do it right here. So I set that to 3. And also for fun, I guess we can set that to 45 so you guys can see it. Now let's run that real quick. Three times zoomed in, and it's rotated. I'll close that, and let's get rid of that rotation. And let's just make that 2. Let me go... Let me know in the comments. You guys can play around with the zooms and see if there's something that you guys prefer. Uh, this two's a little bit big. Um, maybe if it's just 1.5, I think it might look good. But just play around with it yourself. Um, I think this looks kind of good right here. Even the aspect ratio, if you guys find something that looks a little bit better, let me know as well. I hope this video is pretty short, even though I added some stuff towards the end right now. But in the next one, we're actually doing stuff with the tile set and hopefully doing some collision too. And like I mentioned, that one's going to come out a lot sooner. There's not going to be as big as a gap between this one and the last video. Thanks again for watching, and see you guys again next time. Bye.